I am continuing in my reading. What I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a bit as I move along. Right now, I am reading in the book of Leviticus. This will be chapter 10, and I do want to point out that I have my son with me here today. He is not on camera, but you may hear him, and I may have to pause to say hello to him now and then. So let us read chapter 10. Nadab and Abihu perform unauthorized sacrifices and are slain by a fire from the Lord. Aaron and his other sons forbidden to mourn for them. Aaron and his sons to abstain from wine and strong drink. They are to teach all that the Lord revealed to Moses. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is it that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me, and before all the people I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. And Moses called Mishael and Elzaphan, the sons of Uziel, the uncle of Aaron, and said unto them, Come near, carry your brethren from before the sanctuary of the camp, so they went near and carried them in their coats out of the camp, as Moses said. And Moses said unto Aaron, and unto Eleazar, and unto Ithamar his sons, Uncover not your heads, neither rend your clothes, lest ye die, and lest wrath come upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, bewail the burning which the Lord hath kindled. And ye shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. For the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you. And they did according to the word of Moses. Now, this is just immediately after they have been consecrated and set apart as the priests. Nadab and Abihu. They go out and they offer what is called strange fire. In other words, I think this was, it says they took their censer and incense in their hands, right? So... The altar of incense, you're only supposed to burn a very specific type of incense with a very specific chemical mixture in it. They were burning something else. They took it upon themselves to add to the sacrifices that God had put in. Basically, as I said in other, cha in other chapters, that the incense, the burning of incense, is supposed to represent our prayers going up to God. By burning a different incense, they were, in essence, praying a, a false prayer. Or they were showing the people that they could pray to other gods. Shh. So God killed them. And apparently, we're not told this directly, but apparently Aaron was complaining. I said, why did God kill my sons? And Moses told him, because God gave his command. He said, if you are going to be doing this, you have to be sanctified. They violated the commandments of God, and God judged them. They were not sanctified. As as Aaron held his peace, in other words, Aaron said, I, I understand. They were doing things they shouldn't have been doing. And this isn't just mere ritual for show. This is sacred ordinance. This it would be like going into a modern temple and holding a Catholic Mass. Or going into the temple and you know, performing the uh, ordinances of the uh, of Islam. That, that's that's kind of what they, that's in essence what they were doing. They were violating the sanctity of the temple by doing what they were doing. So they were killed. They were taken out of the camp to be buried. 
And Aaron and his other two sons, Eliezer and Ithamar, are forbidden to mourn from... I don't think it was saying that they're not, they are forbidden to uh, feel sorry. They can mourn personally, but they were forbidden to give an outward show of mourning. So you guys are the priests. You have to keep your clothes on. You have to keep on the garments of the priest. You cannot take them off. You are You have to still officiate as priests for the rest of the people. Let the people do the outward show of mourning. But you maintain your position as priests. Because if you leave now, you will be guilty. You'll be just as guilty as they were. And God will kill you too. They had to fulfill their duty as priests. It didn't mean that they couldn't mourn for him inside. They, they, they definitely, I mean, Aaron obviously was mourning for his sons, but he could not give the outward show of mourning because he had to fulfill his duty as priest. Verse 8. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine, nor strong drink, thou, nor thy sons with thee, when, thou, when ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations, and that ye may put difference between holy and unholy, and between unclean and clean, and that ye may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord hath spoken unto them by the hand of Moses. And Moses spake unto Aaron, and unto Eleazar, and unto Ithamar, his sons that were left, Take the meat offering that remaineth of the offerings of the Lord made by fire, and eat it without leaven, uh, without leaven beside the altar, for it is most holy. And ye shall eat it in the holy place, because it is thy due, and thy son's due, of the sacrifices of the Lord made by fire. For so I am commanded. And the wave breast and heave shoulder shall ye eat in a clean place, thou and thy sons and thy daughters with thee. For they be thy due, and thy sons due, which are given out of the sacrifices of peace offerings of the children of Israel. The heave shoulder and the wave breast shall they bring with the offerings made by fire of the fat, to wave it for a wave offering before the Lord, and it shall be thine and thy sons with thee, by a statute forever, as the Lord hath commanded. And Moses diligently sought the, go sought the goat of the sin offering, and behold, it was burnt. And he was angry with Eleazar and Ithamar, the sons of Aaron, which were left alive, saying, Wherefore have ye not eaten the sin offering of the holy place, in the holy place, seeing it is most holy? And God hath given it you to bear the iniquity of the congregation, to make atonement for them before the Lord. Behold, the blood of it was not brought in within the holy place. You should indeed have eaten it in the holy place, as I commanded. And Aaron said unto Moses, Behold, this day have they offered their sin offering and their burnt offering before the Lord, and such things have befallen me. And if I had eaten the sin offering today, should it have been accepted in the sight of the Lord? And when Moses heard that, he was content. Okay, a couple of things here. I, I do like. I, I do like what's going on. Here's one: no alcohol. Not while you're not while you're serving as priest. No alcohol, but. That's so what he's telling you, okay, you guys got to go and eat this stuff. This stuff. And he talks about the daughters in here, too. In previous chapters, don't mention Aaron or his sons and the priest that did. It was like the priest who does the sacrifice gets the heave shoulder or the wave breast. But it's not his personally, it's his family's. He gets it, his sons, his daughters. Certain sacrifices are divided between all the families of Aaron, all of his, his and his sons and their families. That's what it is. So it makes that clarification that this isn't just the priests. It is, this is for the priest's family to eat. But I like this last one. As Moses sought diligently for the goat of the sin offering. Because remember, with the sin offering, when it is an offering made for a leader or a commoner, it is a goat that is sacrificed and the priests eat the meat. But when it is a sacrifice for the priest, or for the congregation as a whole, it is a bull and is burnt completely, all of it. So Moses, he goes along and says, hey, okay, we just did the sin offering. Where's the meat? We're supposed to be eating it. And he finds out that Ithamar and Eleazar burnt the whole thing. And he starts getting mad. He's like, what are you doing? I told you what to do. You're supposed to eat this. And what's Aaron's say? Aaron's basically saying, yeah, I know we were supposed to eat it. 
but because of what Nadab and Abihu did, we felt it necessary to make our own uh, sin offering. And so instead of killing the bull and everything, we just took the sin offering that was ours and we burnt it instead. I think we needed to, we needed to do this. We needed to make our own sin offering, and that's what we did. And Moses says, okay, I understand that. God will accept that, and I like that. Because Aaron's basically saying, we couldn't mourn. You told us we couldn't give an outward show of mourning. And so the only way we could do it and still maintain our position as priests is to burn the sin offering as our sin offering. And... Moses it says, and Moses heard that he was content. And I'll go, I'll leave And sorry, sun got very bright, suddenly comes through the window there. But I like that, that Aaron, his justification to say, look, I'm not worthy of this right now because of what's going on. And if I had done this, then God would not have accepted me. I, I did this because I knew what God. And it, it really shows that Aaron. Moses is the prophet. He is the one that leads Israel. But Aaron is not a stranger to Revelation. He understands the Lord as well. Not as good as Moses, but he does understand the Lord. And he acts with that understanding. So I'm going to leave that here, and I will see you in the next one.